What is going on everybody? I'm Dr. Pistol Luigi and today I'm gonna to show you how to take your toolbox file and bring it into MTS. Now this series is gonna divide it into several parts. Uh, this is part one, bringing your toolbox file into Blender. So before you do that, there are some things you need to do. Now if you're familiar with MTS, some of this stuff shouldn't be a surprise, but if you're completely new to MTS, especially if you're coming from Plans Mod, uh, this stuff is gonna be a little different. So first, you have to rip all the wheels off your model uh, because the wheels are handled as separate parts. Same goes with the engine and the seats as well as any crates you may want to add. So those all have to be taken out because those are separate parts. Also, if you want to have windows and you want to use the MTS window system, you have to make sure that your window is a separate piece like this and that it is zero thick. That works best with toolbox. And you don't have to worry about the texture because uh, toolbox, I mean, uh, MTS is going to override the texture. And then one of the biggest things you have to worry about at this stage is the lights. You have to make sure that the lights are a separate part, not sort of just a texture. Because if you had to say, like, if you, here, I'll show you. If you wanted to say have the lights like this, and you just wanted it to be, like, you wanted that to be your tail light, well, that was, that's going to pose some problems because if you try to make this light up, this entire back part is going to light up. And so that's what your the back of your car is going to look like if you put on your brakes. Uh, so a good way to test if your light will work in MTS is to use the texture painter in Toolbox and select fill part side because uh, Blender uses faces and the light has to be a face which is basically a part side. And so if you let's say I want this to light up I just click that and if that looks right which it does then that will work. You may notice that I do have these little invisible, uh, you know, tiny, tiny little square textures, and that is because this has three separate uh, sides right here. So you see this, this piece, this piece, and this piece, and together they all make up the tail light. And the same thing goes with the headlight. Uh, if you have a multi-part light like this, where this is all one light, then you will have to have a separate piece like I have in order to handle the lens lens flare and the uh, headlight beam properly otherwise if you have all three it's gonna get really jank so of course I'll show you how to do that once we actually start working in blender and then uh, the last thing you have to do is separate out your rotatable parts so toolbox has these uh, part types and so as you'd see most of them most of these parts are core but then the parts that I want to rotate are a different part type now uh, when you export this OBJ, everything that is a different part type is going to be a different, uh, sorry, not part type, model part. Everything that's a different model part in Toolbox is going to be its own little thingy in Blender that makes it easier to set up rotatable objects. Now, you don't have to do this, you, but it makes it worlds easier, and uh, you can't really change the names of these model parts if you can. I haven't figured out a way how to. Uh, so there is sort of a convention that you can use obviously steering wheel if you you know that's a good place to start with steering wheels um, and then so I usually use wheel back for my uh, back axle so all this is going to rotate together and then uh, left front I'll use for the front left wheel but then left track is what I'll use for this part that doesn't spin and uh, I just realized I didn't do my drive shafts so let's say you have a part like for instance this drive shaft I want this to rotate I didn't make it it's not a separate part yet and I don't want this to rotate with the wheels or anything so I have to have a new model part so what you have to do is you have to scroll down and so this is uh, your little parts menu here until you see a model part that you haven't used and so as you see this is the door core open I haven't used that yet so I'm actually going to use those for the pedals. So I'll set this to, oh, I actually already have it used for barrel. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and put this to door open. And then the brake pedal is going to be door closed. And so now as you can see, if I scroll up to door open and closed. They now have the parts in there. So now it's a separate little category. So you can think of this as kind of organizing into categories. And it doesn't matter that this isn't the door, it just matters that they're different. So let's go ahead and do the drive shaft. 
and so barrel is not used yet so I'm going to go ahead and set that to barrel and then trailer is also not used yet so I'll go ahead and set the front one to trailer All right, so now all of our rotating parts, the, and anything that rotates is a rotatable part in MTS. So the steering wheel rotates back and forth when you turn, the pedals rotate when you push them, the wheels rotate. Um, you certainly don't have to have these wheel thingies like I do. Um, that's just something that's just a personal choice. And so, yeah, that anything like the drive shaft, if you want your axle to rotate, I don't in this case, but if you did, anything like that. And if it rotates in a different like direction, then it needs to be its own separate part. So for example, uh, this rotates just in a direction with the wheel, and so this can be grouped with this. Those two, these two sides can rotate together because, you know, metaphorically they're connected with a shaft. But you can't have this rotate with this because they, sh they rotate like this the same. They rotate in a circle with the wheels the same, but they don't rotate on the same steering axis. And so for that, they have to be separate parts. And same thing with the drive shafts. Sure, they're both drive shafts, but they rotate at different angles. So that is the rotatable parts. And I think that is everything that you need to keep in mind before you export your model. So I'm going to go ahead and save. And that's everything. So to export the OBJ, you want to click File, Export as OBJ Model. And it's important to choose one mesh per part because those meshes are the blender groups and the parts are the parts that we just separated. So if you do all parts in one mesh, then everything we just separated was for nothing. Okay. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and put this in uh, the plain file so that I have right now. So I'm not gonna really worry about uh, where this goes yet because I'll show you where all that goes. Uh, once we actually put everything in the pack. So I'm going to save this and I'm not going to close it because we're going to use it a little later. Let me go ahead and up the folder. So now we have our fresh uh, UNU wolf ready to go. And so the first thing you want to do is take this MTL file and delete it. You don't need that. Next, you're going to take the obj file and delete the extra .obj because Blender, I mean, for some reason, uh, Toolbox likes to export it with an extra thing. And then this picture, the obj.png, this is your vehicle's skin. And so if you didn't export it with Toolbox, um, this is another place where you can get your skin. I already have the skin, so I'm going to go and delete that. So what you should have at this point is your Toolbox file, which you made the model in, your obj file which you just exported your skin and that's of course this right here and then you should also make an icon and so that's this right here and that's uh, what appears in the inventory so next we're gonna go ahead I want to get out our blender make sure that you have a new startup file uh, it may start out with a cube in the middle so the first thing you want to do is delete that cube and then I recommend clicking uh, save startup file once you do that that way um, you don't have to delete the cube every time so we're going to need to import our obj and then come right over to this folder that you have right here and copy that path and paste it right up there there's our obj file so we're going to go ahead and import the obj and here we have our jeep so the first thing that you're going to need to do is while you have everything selected rotate your model so just rotate it however to get the rotation set in click z to constrain the axis and then you're going to need to rotate it negative 90. Um, if you made your vehicle pointing in the right direction so as you can see vehicles are supposed to be pointing in this direction i made it properly if you have made an airplane and so this is a plane, you'll notice that the arrow is pointing in the opposite direction because in Flans mod, planes have to be made backwards. Or if you just sort of made your vehicle in a random direction, you know, going this way or whatever, uh, you got to rotate a little differently. But you have to make sure that your vehicle is pointing in the negative Y. So as you can see, this green arrow right here, that's the Y axis. 
and you have to make sure that your vehicle is pointing in the negative Y. You also have to make sure that your vehicle is centered in the middle of the rear axle. So once you have all that stuff set, your vehicle is now successfully imported into Blender. In the next episode, we'll go ahead and talk about what needs to be done to your vehicle once it's in Blender to get it ready for MTS. Thank you for watching, and I hope you tune in next time. Just an illusion.